this time setting. Bless us now as we are engaging in your word tonight. Give us a word that will be beneficial, helpful, renewing, and refreshing as we approach on our lives, uh, as we approach this new system that we're in, this epidemic and this time of unprecedented situations. Lord, we need you to lead us, guide us, direct us. God, we look to you because we know you have every answer to every situation. So we ask tonight that you will bless us with your word. Speak to our hearts. Speak now that our servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Get your Bibles, go to Hebrew chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Hebrews chapter 5. Verses 1 through 10. We're going to do these verses responsibly. And when you have it, say amen. amen. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gift and sacrifice for sin. For by reason hereof he ought as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sin. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that says unto him, Thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee. Whom in the days of his flesh, when he had offered a prayer, supplication, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him together. Amen, amen. I want to continue this series, some more good news, some more good news. But I want to subtitle it, We Have a Perfect High Priest. We have a perfect high priest. Before you tune me off, I want to kind of change the context of this high priest and say that you have a perfect pastor. You have a perfect shepherd because uh, most Baptists cannot relate to a high priest. If, if we were Catholics, we could understand perhaps the high priest concept. Uh, but in our concept, in our context, sometimes that ideal of high priest may be difficult. So I want you to do uh, uh, the gymnastics mentally of where it says high priest, think of it as a shepherd or a pastor. And I think this is a relevant word because uh, somebody listening to me, watching me right now, or even someone in the sanctuary yeah. who are deterred and disturbed and really disappointed with church, ministry, and Christianity, yeah. all because of a pastor, yeah. preacher, prophet yeah. that lets you down. Yeah. There are those who've been hurt in the pew 
because they have given their all to those who wear the title of prophet, preacher, pastor, priest, only to find out that their sins are compatible to the sins of those in which they preach to. And I know we set them up and put them on a pedestal. And I tell you, New Hope, please don't put me on the pedestal. Put me on the altar, but don't put me on a pedestal. Number one, you're going to set me up for failure. Because as long as my feet are the feet of clay, long as I am flesh and blood, I am subject to fault, failures, and error. And when you put all your eggs on me, you'll find yourself disappointed. And there are many who have given themselves to ministry only to be let down because of what they have experienced and seen in the pulpit, but you must understand and must know that there is not perfection in the pulpit or in the pew. And stop looking for perfection. Because you will not find perfection. And as it has been said over and over again, if you ever find a perfect church, perfect ministry, you get out of it. Because you're going to mess it up. You're going to mess it up if you show up. We must understand that, that we have a high priest in Christ that gives us some hope. We have a pastor in Christ that gives us some hope that gives us the mindset and the attitude of knowing of knowing that God has given us a high priest that we can hold in high esteem that we can honor and respect knowing that we will never, ever be let down. This Hebrew writer gives us this idea, this hope of this high priest. Remember last week, the Old Testament, uh, the, the high priest was one that was uh, called by way of heredity. Or, or you had to be in a certain lineage. To be able to be called into the title of priesthood. Then as it moved to uh, the New Testament, it became more political. And they were selected based upon their relationship with those uh, who were in the Roman government and the powers that be. And so they understood, they knew what corruption looked like. They knew what corruption in uh, that position would, the detriment that it would cause to the church and to those who were following in the ministry of Christ and so forth and the ministry of the church. They knew the detriment of having corruption. And so when when the, when the Hebrew writer mentions and speaks of a high priest, one in which we can all embrace, one in which we can all look up to, one who will not discriminate and show any respect of person, one in which we have as our savior, He's trying to pull and place the argument that Jesus is the best thing you've ever seen. You've seen Moses as prophets. You've seen the angels 
But you've seen high priests. Jesus fits in those categories, but he's much better and he is much more. And so he wants them to focus not on the position of those who hold the position of the high priest, but he wants them to focus on the person of Christ who has now become the ultimate high priest. No longer will they have to change out high priest. No longer will they have to call another high priest. No longer will they have to call another pastor in place. Jesus has come once and for all and has interceded on our behalf and has given us access to God. A couple of things I want to share with you and I'll get out of your way. That I see here in our text. He names the qualification for the priest. The qualification for the priest. Look at verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 5. For every high priest taken among you, taken from among men, is ordained for men. That word ordained, it means to set. It means to be in place. They have been consecrated. Consecrated by men. It is a process because the office is too serious for anybody to hold. I've been here 13 years and I have yet to ordain any preachers. Not that I don't want to ordain any preachers, but those that have come to me and say they've been called to preach. Well, I'm old school and we have some uh, procedures that, that we would like you to engage in. Uh, one one procedure is I, I, I want to know how bad you want it. And one of the things is a delay on you being presented to the church. I, I want you to pray about it because you, we, we need to make sure that God is calling you to this. Because a lot of times when people hear a good message, they feel the Lord calling them to preach. And sometimes he's just calling you to holiness. He's just calling you to righteous living. He's just calling you to do better. It's not necessarily in everybody's ministry is not behind the pulpit. Some have serving ministry. Some have giving ministry. Some have encouraging ministry. Some are called to be behind the scenes. And you're not any less just because you're behind the scenes. Because the truth be told, those of us who are up front are only able to do what we're doing. is because those that are behind the scenes that are undergirding what we are doing. And so they have to be consecrated. They are consecrated by men. They are ordained. There's also a scripture that says, lay hands on no man fast. Be, be, be careful who you won't call preacher, pastor, apostle, reverend doctor. They have to be consecrated by men. But then secondly, they must have compassion in ministry. They must have compassion in ministry. Look at verse 2 and 3. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? It takes some patience and compassion to deal with ignorance. I know y'all thinking about some people right now, but it it takes some compassion. You, You got to have the heart of 
the shepherd to deal with both ignorance and immaturity. And so this is one of the qualifications of priests. You need to have some compassion. You need to have a, a, a level of patience when you're dealing with people because people just don't know. And sometimes they are not mean, they just green. There's just some things we just don't know. And that priest, that pastor must be compassionate. Why? It gives a reason why it should be compassionate if you hadn't closed your Bible. On them that are out of the, out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmities. Meaning, the same mercy you need, I need it too. So, so when I go to the altar to, to make sacrifice for you, I need to make sacrifice for me. And if the truth be told, where I am now, I hadn't always been. And where you are now, you hadn't always been. Showing up at Bible study during a pandemic, listening to live stream during a pandemic. I mean, there are places in our lives we hadn't always been. We have, we have developed and evolved to a place where we are now ready for growth and development and new things. It does not happen overnight, but I thank God for pastors, priests, and leaders who are patient and passionate enough to give you space to develop and to grow. And so qualification should be consecrated, Compassionate, but here's the third one. Here's the big one, though. Here's the third one. Called by the master. Look at verse, verse 4. And no man taketh his honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron, must be called. This is the way Big Mama put it. Some went and some were sent. Those that went will soon come back, but those that were sent understand we must go. We must go on because there is a calling on your life. You know why I keep showing up? Is a calling. You, you don't take any glory in yourself. When God has called you to do it, you do it because of the calling. I got here today and I said to myself, I said, most folks don't see this glamour side of uh, pastorship. They think it's all glamour and glitter and gold. But if you got here early, you would have saw me opening up the church. Cutting on the lights, yeah. rolling the gate back, yeah. sweeping the flow. Yeah. I swept the flow for y'all got here. Yeah. People don't see that side. They think it's all glitter yeah. and glamour. Yeah. But when there's a calling on your life, yeah. when God has called you to something, you deal with the ups and downs, the highs and the lows. You deal with the disappointments. You deal with the hurts. You deal with negative, mean, and, and bad people. You deal with it all because you know what God has called you to do. And you can't help but, but do it. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be right if I couldn't do it. So Hobbin wouldn't be able to deal with me at the house if I couldn't do what I'm doing now. Because there's a calling that calls sometimes a burden, but at the same time, it's a blessing. 
Sometimes it disturbs me, but sometimes it gives me peace. At the same time, God will use you in your gifts and talent, but in that he gives you your own deliverance. That's why some of us keep showing up. Because it's a calling. Okay, okay, so we got, we got three qualifications. Almost done, y'all. The consecration by man, the compassionate, the compassion in ministry, and the call by the master. Those are the three qualifications that the Hebrew gives in the Hebrew writer gives in chapter five for high priests. But remember, the argument in Hebrew is to highlight Jesus and to show why Jesus is so much better. I wish I was in a holiness church. I wouldn't have to sweat too hard here. If I was in a holiness church, just the mentioning of his name. You, you, you see, shouting, jumping, and shouting is not only emotional. You need to have some intellect and some understanding as to why you are jumping, shouting, and hollering, and running. Most folks, if you ask them why you shouting, they don't know why they shout. They just had an emotional string. The musician hit, hit their nerve and they just got all emotional. That's why they can cuss you out after church is because they were only caught in emotion. But when you mix intellect with emotion, when I know why I'm doing what I'm doing, when I understand why I'm shouting and praising God, when I have an understanding of who God is, who Jesus is. Y'all ready for this? All right, we're almost done. Stay with me here. Verse 5 tells why Jesus is our great high priest, our great pastor, our great under shepherd. Number one, men did not consecrate him. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. I don't know why people want to be a preacher or want to be a pastor. This is not something you just decide, this is going to be my next career move. It's something I'm going to go to school for and I just want to be a preacher. Do you know the burden that a preacher carries? Do you know the bear burden that those who work in ministry carry? Let, let, let me show you, show you what your burden. Your burden, what happened to Jesus, is going to happen to you. He, he even said, if you suffer with me, you're going to reign with me. So you got to go through Calvary and crucifixion. But don't pout too much because you know you got a resurrection coming. But the struggle of ministry, the struggle of priesthood, Jesus did not find glory in high priest. Verse 5, but he said unto him, thou art my son, this is Lord talking, today have I begotten thee. No man laid hands on Jesus. The Father ordained him, anointed him. Y'all remember when he was baptized in the river of Jordan and he came up and his father says, this the one right here, y'all. This is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. Y'all remember when he was on the mountain of transfiguration and his insides came out and the glory of God shined upon him? His daddy got on the loudspeaker one more time and said, this is him, y'all. He is. This is my beloved son in whom 
I am well pleased. He was not ordained by men. He didn't go through no ordination process. Preachers ask him questions. Matter of fact, he was asking the preachers questions at 12 years old because the Lord had laid his hand on. He was not consecrated by men. He didn't have a certificate on his wall of ordination. He was ordained by God himself. He's already appointed by God himself. Verse 5, verse 6 rather, as he said also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And those Bible readers remember Melchizedek was the king of Salem. And when Abraham won a great battle, he showed up. And Abraham paid tithes unto Melchizedek. Why? Because the Lord had granted Abraham an upset victory. I wish y'all read the Bible. He granted him an upset victory. And Abraham knew nobody but a God could have done that. And so he wanted to give homage. He wanted to pay homage to Melchizedek. But think about Melchizedek. We don't know who his daddy was. We don't know where he came from. He says that Jesus, you're going to be under the order of Melchizedek. Your priesthood will not have a beginning nor an end. I'm going to save that because that's going to be significant to the last verse because it says the same thing in verse Men did not consecrate, but then thirdly again, he had the ministry of compassion. Verse 7, 8, and 9, he had the ministry of compassion. Look at verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers, supplication and with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, he learned, though he, he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Verse 9, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him. Ministry of compassion. Some theologians and scholars says in this particular verse, verse 7, it's a reference to when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And so Jesus understands and know how it feels to lament, to struggle, to wrestle with something. You have a high priest who knows just how you feel. How you feeling right now? The Lord says, I understand. I know just how you feel it. You can appreciate any pastor, any preacher who understands what you're going through and how you're feeling. I was with my brother this weekend and he shared with me, we were talking about mom's transition and he was telling me about how people would come up and try to console him. And his words to them were, is your mama still living? He said, if your mama's still living, I don't want you talking to me. He said, let somebody talk to me. This mama is on the other side. He, he said in so many words, he wanted somebody that could relate to where he is. And that's 
what ministry becomes, and a lot of times, particularly during those hours, a lot of times we have learned the goldenness of silence. Sometimes what's not said is better than what we try to say. Because there's some things, y'all, we just can't fix with words. And I don't care how many cliches and I don't care how much scripture you know, sometimes all you need a friend to do is just show up. And don't open your mouth and don't say a word because you can't fix this with word. Jesus says, I'm, I'm your great high priest because I know how you feel it. I've walked down that road. I know what it means to be lied on, stabbed in the back, deceived and mistreated. I know what it means to have a best friend and your best friend dies. I know what it means to struggle with God and wrestle with God. I understand how you feel. So stop talking about don't nobody know how I feel. The Lord knows how you feel. Won't give yourself a pity party. Won't nobody know what I'm going through. The Lord says, I know. I know so much, verse 8 says, I was obedient even under pain and pressure. I know how to maintain obedience when the heat gets on. And some of us are good as long as there's no heat and no pressure. But when heat and pressure show up, we lose our faith, lose our belief. So Jesus says, I understand that. And then the Hebrew writer said, he's been made perfect. And he has become our perfect way to salvation. What a mighty God. Weezer. Let me leave you when I tell you this last one. Verse 10. Verse 10 says, Call of God and high priest, there it is again, after the order of Melchizedek. Time is filled with swift transition. None on earth can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Everything in this life is transit. Nothing stays the same. Things are always changing. But Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever more. What the Lord is saying here in this Hebrew text, when he gives Jesus the title under the order of Melchizedek, that he will be one who will be standing when the dust clears. We are able to say he's king of kings, lord of lords, but I want to add priests of priests. Because once he gave the ultimate Sacrifice. There was no need for the high priest. He gave us, not only did he intercede for us, he gave us access to the throne of grace. Y'all ain't forgot Hebrews 4.16, have you? Come boldly unto the throne of grace that ye may obtain mercy in your time of trouble, that you may find grace in your time of trouble. Not only is he interceding for us, he has given us access. When, when my... My son, I guess, was around 12, 13, 14. He would always, uh, much as he can, 
would have people coming over, uh, sleepovers and swim parties and so forth. And uh, on this particular time, I'm sitting in, in my chair and this fella walks in, unannounced, just open the door, walks in with a bag in his hand. And he says to me, good evening and goes upstairs, change clothes, T-shirts, gym shorts, flip-flops, goes to my refrigerator, opens the door, fix him something to eat. He eats it, goes right back upstairs and get in bed. And I said, Trey, who is that? He says, Dad, that's Cordarius. He kept on doing what he was doing. I said, well, who is Cordarius? And he said something. He says, Dad, that's my friend. And because he's a friend of Trey, he had access to my house, to my refrigerator, to my bed, and to my food. Well, y'all think I'm talking about Trey and Cordoris, but let me tell you, because of Jesus, our high priest, we got access. You got access to some things. You got access to joy peace. You got access to healing. You got access to deliverance because of that your high priest. And can we call his name up in here? Anybody know his name? His name is Jesus. And this is why we celebrate and this is why he, we praise him because he is our great high priest. He has given us access. I got access to my father. Now I don't even have to go through a priest now. I ain't got to confess to a priest. I ain't got to tell the priest about my dirt. I can go straight to God. And he'll hear my faintest cry. And he'll answer by and by. He won't judge me for what I say to him and because he already know everything I've done. And he already got forgiveness ready to give me just at the mentioning of, Father, give me another chance. I tell you, y'all, we got something to celebrate. And we've got some good news even in this pandemic. You got a high priest. You got a preacher. You got a pastor that you can confide in. You can go to. He'll intercede on your behalf. And at the same time, give you access to the Father. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you again for your word tonight. Thank you for allowing us to share your word tonight. We pray for those that were listening. And we're grateful for the privilege and opportunity to now gain access to you. In Old Testament time, you were unapproachable. In the Garden of Eden, because of the fall they were evicted out of the garden even in the wilderness they couldn't approach you they could not approach the tabernacle they could not approach the temple but thanks be to God we can go to you thank you God for giving us access and somebody need access tonight God Somebody needs salvation. Somebody needs healing. 
Somebody needs deliverance. Somebody need power and anointing. Somebody need hope, God. Grant us access through your son, Jesus, that we may find help in our time of need. We love you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing with us on tonight. I want to remind you that you can connect with this church. You can become a virtual member of the New Hope Church. Uh, we have some information on the screen that you can connect with the church through our website, New Hope Orange Mound, or even call the church 901-323-6507. If you need prayer, please give us about five or ten minutes once we dismiss. Uh, we will have our counselors available. And if you need prayer, please call and share. I want to invite you also to look on our website. We have important information. If you know anybody in the Orange Mound area uh, that will be having children that will be going to school, uh, we have some important information of how they can get laptops so they can uh, be able to be set up virtually and not uh, go to school at this time during the pandemic. Uh, so please visit our website. We have some important information uh, for those that live in this community and if you know someone that lives in this community. We want to thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. We pray and trust that you will were blessed by the message. And continue to keep us in your prayers. And remember, there is hope. All right.